year has got its buzzword on how you can make money, how you can be a property owner. The buzzword for 2018 is clearly property stock falls. Yes, property stock falls. Today on the show, we find out about the pros, the cons, how do you get in, how do you get out if you need to, and how much money are you going to need? How do you... And we're back. So we all know that buying property comes with all sorts of challenges. Not only is the purchase cumbersome, but it comes with extra costs, hidden costs. Then there's a deposit, then there's transfer duties, and then there's legal fees. These costs coupled with the increasing difficulty to get a home loan leaves a lot of South Africans without the means to own property. Enter property stock fails. Many South Africans are now promised income wealth. Joining me right now is the CEO of BSK Marketing and Associates, Busis Kejana, who has been working with stock fails for over 20 years. Welcome to you, Osmus. Okay, yeah. so I, I, I now want to go back to, you know, the origins of Stockfell and, you know, the person best to speak to is you, Mambusi, and mm -hmm. you have got a, a magazine here that we've got with us, a Stockfell Voice. Um, so you say there are 811,000 uh, Stockfell programs currently in the country, right? Mm -hmm. 11.4 million members and mm -hmm. an estimated 44 billion mm -hmm. in, in, in how much they're all worth. Mm -hmm. Who administers all of these? Uh, no one administ administers that except stock files themselves yeah. in their individual groups wherever they are scattered throughout the country. But there isn't a body in South Africa that administers this in a sense that stock files are fairly independent, yeah. you know. So they've been around for many years, like you've just said. Yeah. They've got their own constitution, they've got their own goals and objectives and all that. But there is no controlling body per se that controls and administers, you know, stock fairs as a collective. Yeah. So yeah. there's no way that one needs to register it. We can just decide we're going to do a stock fail and run with it. Definitely, it's as informal as all that, you know, but um, I'm not saying that, you know, in the future we should not look into, you know, yeah. that uh, organizational body. But stock fairs are very complex, you know. People tend to take stock fairs at face value. Yeah. Remember, this is about money. People start stock fairs for various reasons, you know, simple one, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so once you come in there and say, I want to administer you, I want to control you, you are obviously going to be looked with suspicion. What is in it for mm. us? What is it that you want from us? Is this why stock fairs keep clear from banks? Because that's exactly what banks do. They, 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 they obviously want to control that. Yeah, they kind of keep it clear from banks, but they still do in any way put their money, money the bank, they pack it, <laughs> okay, you yeah. know what I mean, yeah. So explain to me then uh, the property stock fell. I, it, for me, it's extremely confusing. Who owns the house? How do I get money? You know, who, when I do get money, who puts it in my account? If you're saying so, that there's no administration. So, so for us, you know, firstly, we buy properties that are below market value. That's what we mean, you know, uh, we go to auctions, we go to distressed sellers and so on and so forth. Secondly, we open a, a, a vehicle, either a company, a PTY LTD or mm -hmm. a trust. Now we are an official body now with an official structure. We then um, agree to go on an auction or one of us goes into an auction. We buy the property in the name of the trust or in the name of the company. Once that is done, we know that we've got a some sort of a, a structure that governs um, mm. uh, the stock file. Uh, secondly, what we do is that uh, we identify the various skills and the various expertise within the stock file members. For instance, one of my members is, a, is an advocate, you know, mm. she's a lawyer, and she, she knows all the legal nitty gritties. She drafts the contracts for us, she drafts the contracts that manage our stock file. Mm. Um, uh, secondly, we have a guy who's an expert in tax. You know, this is a guy who advises um, whenever we receive, we, receive, we receive rental income. Where does the rental income go? What is the tax implications mm. for that uh, 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 rental income? Thirdly, you've got me. I'm, I'm the property investor. I've been in the property market for a very long time. I come in and advise where are the properties that we can make profit with, where are the properties that we can flip, meaning properties that you we buy can... Buy and you, you renovate yeah, it and, and then... And sell, okay. and sell. So there are various vehicles, but... So let's say you buy, sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. you buy, you renovate, mm -hmm. you sell, mm -hmm. and you make a profit of 200000 mm -hmm. Does that go back into the account, or do we split it amongst us? Well, it depends. It, it depends on the material conditions at that point. You know, oh. there are members who would come to say and say, look, I would want 100,000 rands from 200,000. Give me 
20 percent in mm. my own pocket let me reinvest the other the other amount mm. you know the others would say look let's reinvest the entire amount let's, go buy, another let's go buy another property which is what we extremely encourage so that we are able to grow the wealth you know so, Mambusi, from your end do you support property stock fails Oh, I do. I actually belong to two stock firms that are also in property. Oh, wow. Yeah. Tell us more. Yeah, geez. Uh, the one that I always brag about, I was actually invited to this stock fair. At that point in time, I knew nothing about this thing called yeah. property investment because I thought only super wealthy people yeah. you know, could invest. And a friend just said, come, join us. We're buying a, a piece of land in, in, in Hazy View, Crooker Park Lodge. Yeah. And uh, 10 years uh, down the line, we had... 10 actually, years. years? down the line, actually, actually, it's almost 20 now in the that uh, we took out, a, we registered ourselves as a company because you have to be a legal entity to be able to access finance. Yes. And fortunately, unlike Matimba, we we're fortunate enough, we did manage to get a bond uh, and we paid the property. I mean, we bought the property, we paid it off. It's actually in a holiday resort. It's a four-star holiday resort. Yeah. So it's paid off now. So we actually just, you know, getting passive income out of that property. Uh, yeah, the other one is me and my three friends. Yeah. We don't really call ourselves a stock fell, but the mechanics are the same. Mm. In that the three of us, we decided, oh, here's a townhouse going up for grabs. And uh, we look into our wallets. We said, OK, we are fine. And we went and bought that property. And we just, you know, uh, ripping rental out of it. Now, these are models that can actually be applied by many stock fells out there who already have cash, a lot of cash mm. that is flowing, you know. Mm. Uh, uh, amongst and them. then you add, yeah. you just buy as many properties and you add to the property portfolio. Definitely, definitely. You can actually create, yeah, I mean, go, grow your property portfolio, you know, be it private or commercial, mm. you know. The key thing is just that you need to have that desire, you need to have that hunger, you know, to go into this property investment. And ultimately patience as well. And patience, of course. It's yeah. not a get rich uh, yeah, kind quick, scheme. quick scheme, yeah. But what can go wrong? Thank you so much, Mambusi, for that valuable insight into Stockfell's. While property Stockfell makes sense as the best investment vehicle, should you be worried? And if you are, what are you worried about? From myself and the rest of the team, have yourself a lovely evening. We'll see you tomorrow evening. Bye-bye.